In my experience, most portrait commissions come through an organisation. Paintings take different lengths of time. A commission, for example, may take months, a year, whereas a portrait painted, a head and shoulders in particular, painted directly from life, there's nothing quite like knowing you've got, say, three hours and being able to nail it in that time. When something's done on the spur of the moment, as it were, uh, there's a vitality and a spontaneity to the finished result that's really exciting. I always enjoyed making things and drawing things, drawing things especially. I found that as I drew things, as a young boy, people come along and say, oh, aren't you clever and all that sort of thing. And I had incredible encouragement. And there's nothing better for a child than to be encouraged. At grammar school, I had a, a teacher by the name of Eddie Phillips, and uh, he was very inspirational. He'd come in with uh, absolute pearls, like, in art, there are no rules. And he'd say sometimes, oh, anybody can draw. It's whether you've got ideas that matter. And those sort of uh, provocative statements and questions would get my young mind thinking, and uh, um, I owe a lot to him too. I did have formal training, but only for a very brief period. I did my foundation course at Northampton and then went to Liverpool and dropped out after the first term. I don't know if you're familiar with the Moonies, but uh, they're a so-called bizarre religious sect. And I was 18 and very vulnerable and in a new place and uh, unsure about the world and what I wanted to do in it. Even though I, I loved art and, and felt that, that was a calling, if you like, or a vocation, um, it seemed to me that this was more important, that I had a contribution to make that was going to change the world. And rather foolishly, um, I went along with that for about four or five years until I slowly came to my senses and realised that actually it's painting that I wanted to do more than anything. And that, that's, that was always my love and that was always something, um, it was something I came back to. There's an incident in Japan that I remember quite clearly. I'd been doing almost no drawing. and I was at the house of somebody who enjoyed calligraphy in their spare time. And they spent a long time preparing the room and the paper, the scroll and the ink, the Indian ink and the, uh, the brushes and so on. Very ritualistic, uh, like many things in Japan. But when he was ready, there was absolute silence. He picked up the brush and made this mark on paper and signed it and got his, what they call a, a hanko, it's a stamp, and then stamped it. Can't quite remember the order, but I certainly remember that mark and it was so free and direct. And um, there's something very special about that. I thought, you know, I haven't done any drawing for ages. I wonder if I can still do it. Is this something that I've still got the ability to do? And I remember going into a little um, shop in Japan and buying a little pad of very cheap paper and a couple of pens, marker pens. And uh, I got on the train and just tried to start drawing people sitting opposite me in the train. I was on the equivalent of the circle line in, in Tokyo. And uh, I found very quickly that it began to came, come back and I could see people and I'd just be drawing them like that. And even though they knew that I was drawing them, they were very um, cooperative in a way. Being Japanese, that's, uh, that's something you can probably say about most Japanese. But um, as I was drawing, um, over a few days, weeks, I suppose, I began to realize that I'd still got that ability and it's just something I needed to work on and spend more time practicing. And I felt that, what a relief I felt that it was that I could, I could see a, a way of getting back into it. I find the world fascinating, interesting, confusing, um, compelling, and it's, it's trying to um, put it into a, an order or into a, a form that uh, encapsulates it somehow. Um, and there's a great joy in, in being able to uh, make something so instantly at the, um, the stroke of a brush not just one stroke, but several strokes of the brush over the period of two, three hours sometimes, 
and see it there realized it wasn't there before and suddenly it's there uh, and when it works it's a fantastic feeling I do two things one um, are largely commission portraits for a client and the other thing I do is work for myself making paintings that um, are more experimental paintings that I can show in galleries I can I can sell via my website so those two things, and it's finding a balance between the two. Commissions are good because they pay well. Um, I'm a member of the Royal Society of Portrait Painters and uh, they work as an agent, so they find me quite a lot of work. I get word through word of mouth and so on. How do you explain a feeling? You know, how do you, how do you tell somebody what it's like to, I don't know, run up that hill or cycle as fast as you can go or you know I'm, I'm not a woman clearly but how do you explain to somebody the joy of giving birth impossible you can only intimate it you can only begin to express it and I think that's part of what painting does partly what music does it's a different language and it says things in a different way to words and it communicates at a different level um, than words can I use um, pencils and paper and I love drawing uh, pen and ink uh, it makes a very black mark and it's a mark that you can't change so that um, really focuses the mind when it comes to painting I use brushes uh, oil paints I've used all sorts of medium but I do like to use oil paint it's a traditional medium that Rembrandt let's say was using or Velasquez and all my uh, forebears so it has a tradition to it, and it will last, if used properly, for hundreds and hundreds of years. So there's, that's a nice thing to know, and uh, it has a kind of meaty quality about it. Fairly traditional stuff. I think I've found uh, what I do best and what I enjoy most. I get to meet extraordinary people, people at the top of their field. I painted Ken Dodd. Ooh. 10, 12 years ago now. And he's somebody that I saw as a little boy on television and was absolutely amazed by the way he looked and uh, sounded. And I thought, what an extraordinary person. It made me laugh. And um, some years later, I looked at the National Portrait Gallery website and they only had two or three black and white photographs of him. So I thought, this is a, an opportunity maybe for me to paint something that the National Portrait Gallery would like to have. And uh, I contacted him, said I'd like to paint his portrait. And he said, yeah, that's fine. So we met up, we met up in Froome, quite near to where I live in Bath. And he was performing at the Memorial Theatre. And um, we, we spoke and um, got to know each other a little bit. Um, I got my camera with me, my sketchbook. I did lots of drawing as much as I could, took lots of photographs. And to cut a long story short, made a painting uh, completed it, um, a bigger painting than the painting I'm talking about, uh, had it framed and then thought no it's not good enough and um, put it to one side and came back only to that, uh, came back to that um, project only about three years later and looked at some of the early photographs I'd taken of him in Froome and there's one particular one they were quite um, poor photographs, but they caught something of the, the backstage quality of a comedian who's been doing it all his life. And there was the mess of the changing rooms, and there was plastic bags everywhere, and there were jokes spilling out of this bag and that, and half-drunk um, glasses of, uh, of liquid and, and so on. And um, I saw this one particular um, photograph where he was gesturing actually to my wife at the time telling her something about what makes a joke work and he's very interested in the mechanics of humor and I thought this kind of captures him at the end of um, a long performance in a way that you know, most people don't get to see so when I'm when I'm painting a portrait like that of somebody in the public eye how can I say something about them that reveals something about them that people haven't seen before? And I felt this caught him, as I say, at the end of a, um, a three and a half hour stint on stage, a very physical act. 
in his shirt sleeves, in his, in his vest, sweating, tired, but elated. And I think I've caught something about that aspect of his character. He's driven as a comedian, as a person, to, well, not make people, people laugh because, as he'll say, you can't make people laugh. You tickle their chuckle muscle. And uh, so hopefully I've caught something of, of that drive in him to make um, the world a happier place.